Okay, so here we're looking at the, uh, I'm on the uh, battery side of the bike, or the right side if you were sitting on it. So the side panel's off, of course, and uh, I have my modified screwdriver. Okay, I'm going to go through some numbers with you guys, and there's a few different ways to do this, but one thing you might want to do before you get going with your adjustment is to take a couple of measurements. Now, what I, what I did, um, of course the bike, now I don't have anyone to help me, and you're going to need someone to probably help you, but whenever you do the measurements, the bike should just be sitting up, you know, in its proper riding position, nice and straight to do your measurements. Now, when I did mine, I did them from the floor, so I was already at the, all at the floor, all the way down, nice and straight, and I measured up to the, uh, <clears throat> to the uh, helmet uh, locking mechanism here on the, on the front. So just be consistent when you do the measurements. Uh, in hindsight or retrospect, possibly the better and more accurate measurement would be from the uh, axle bolt here on the rear up to that location but you know you decide what you're going to do so basically the bike you measure it when it's just sitting in its free position um it just naturally sits there and then after you make the adjustments you can do the measurement again and see what has changed so i'll talk about those numbers in a sec what i got and uh how things impacted the uh, performance of the bike so that's one good thing to do so you're going to need someone to help you again. Do your measurement. Just do it however you want. Just remain consistent. One measurement off the bike. Next measurement while you're sitting on the bike and having it nice and straight. Okay, let's get going. Need to do some explaining here. This information is right out of the, uh, the uh, shop manual for the motorcycle. So what we're looking at here, of course this is the uh, shock assembly here. Now this is where the threads are on the motorcycle, that's at the top. So if you're under there looking, that's where you're going to find the threads. There's two rings here. There's a top ring that turns, that's the locking ring. And then there's a bottom ring and that's the adjustment ring. So when I'm under there, because it's very diff it's going to be difficult to see this in the video, but the first thing that you have to do, you have to turn the top ring or the locking ring uh, counterclockwise and then loosen it off nicely. And then the bottom ring is the one that's going to adjust the preload. So if you turn the bottom ring clockwise, you're going to increase the preload if you turn it counterclockwise you're going to decrease it or else make the spring longer and softer so in my case I want to increase the preload so on the bottom adjustment spring or adjustment ring uh, we did clockwise and I ended up adjusting it you know generally or I think I got around 14 millimeters it's not a hundred percent precise but the important thing to do before you get started also see this measurement C you want to measure this from the very top of the spring so the top sort of base of the spring to the very bottom and the base of the spring if that makes sense I hope that makes sense but you want to measure that and what I found you know give or take a few millimeters when I measured mine it was set to the very soft setting and there's a standard setting of 197 but I believe mine was at it was probably around 205 so I ended up adjusting mine, give or take, maybe around 14 millimeters. Um, and I got it up to, to 190.5, which is slightly above, when they say minimum hard, is 187. So I'm within spec. You don't want to go any lower than 187. And I kind of came out around 190.5. You can measure it just using a tape measure. Just get a visual on things and, and do your best. Get as close as you can because this number is really important to stay within these specs if you're buying a brand new bike what I would suggest if you you know if you're 120 pounds it's probably going to be set at this soft setting and if you're 120 pounds it's going to be fine I'm going to guess it should be fine if you're around maybe 160 pounds 
uh, you might want to have it set to the standard and if you're like getting into the 190 the 200 pound range or above um, I really believe you should have it set down to you know near this the most the the hard setting here and so if you're buying the bike new I mean you pay a lot of, in a lot of cases for a so-called setup fee they should be setting this bike up so you don't have to do what I'm doing now at this point had I kind of known this better and di I didn't realize it was set to the soft on shipment but had I known I would have had them adjust this for me so just a word of advice so this C measurement that's very important to uh, remember that and get that correct and when I when all is said and done I ended up doing a four turns clockwise and I think in the video I started out I talked about three and I was at about 10 mils give or take again it's not super super accurate but I ended up doing four and I determined I was in around 14 millimeters that I changed the uh, the preload and we were talking about the measuring of the bike from the, the ground up to a specific point so just sitting there static nothing happening with the bike it originally sat at 30.5 and with all my weight on it it went down to 28.5 and then after my adjustment the bike actually sat basically at its maximum height that's possible uh, well as far as the measurements go at 31.5 and then with all my weight on it, it was at 28.75. Now, let me explain something. That doesn't sound like a lot, but these springs are progressive. And I think with this Yamaha, with the 250, I think that spring just is a very soft spring to begin with. And then it sort of starts ramping up. So although this doesn't sound like a big change, the, there was a big change in performance-wise because... I went out and did some testing on some rough terrain and the bike felt way more sturdy it didn't bottom out which I believe it was kind of bottoming out on some of these standard things I was driving on and that disappeared so the bike felt way more sturdy uh, the other thing on acceleration for sure under hard acceleration the back end uh, would sag down like you could feel it drop and that's something you don't want to have happen especially if you're going into a corner and accelerating it's gonna lift up the front tire of your bike and it's gonna make things difficult for you or even on soft terrain you don't want to be going around a corner accelerating and lifting up your front tire so it seemed to eliminate all those issues and plus uh, with a passenger on the back it seems much more stable uh, it doesn't drop down near as much so Overall, this was super successful, uh, my adjustments here. And again, my ideas on the weight and the adjustment, I mean, that's my opinion, but I think I'm, I think I'm pretty close in, in the idea. So don't get caught up in, you know, before and after and, you know, the compression after you sit on it, you think there's not a big change. But again, that, that uh, spring is progressive, so it does make a big change. Uh, trust me on that. So anyways, I'm going to try to show you uh, how I did this uh, in the video here and hopefully you can make it happen for yourself. Okay, just so you know, just to get at this uh, shock assembly, uh, what I found is really all you need to do, there's the two bolts underneath that hold the seat on. So take those two out and the seat just sort of slides back and it pops off. And then you're going to have to take off the side panel where the battery's on, which is uh, on the right side if you're sitting on the bike. And there's only one um, bolt that's there, so you take that out. And then it's fitted in with two pressed in, they're kind of like, I guess, grommet things. But you need to take off the uh, seat and then take off the uh, one bolt down there and then just pop these off gently. You can actually see them underneath, and you'll be able to slide this out. Uh, the panel comes off quite easy. And that's really all there is to it, getting at it. And then, um, since we're not using, like this is, just to show you, this is uh, basically one of the tools that you would use to adjust the preload. 
uh, with those two rings. Um, now you can't fit these in and in the manual it says to you know the tip is to take the entire shock assembly out. Uh, yeah I'm not gonna do that and so what I did I got a long screwdriver and I took my grinder to it and I just modified the end so that it didn't have a you know a very narrow face on it. I flattened it out and put a little notch in there and so I was able to uh, use a screwdriver to tighten and loosen the, the rings. So that's how I did it. Um, I mean, other, the only other option, you have to like disassemble everything and no, I'm not going to do that. And I don't think I did any harm to the bike doing it this way. And you know, it worked out. And if you're going to loosen this, it's counterclockwise. So we're in here and I actually, I already gave it a try, I gave it a whack and it did loosen. So. I'm just going to make sure I'm lined up here and then I have to move the camera back because I need to see. I can't see. Uh, but anyways, you're just hitting it um, and you're turning it counterclockwise. And go to the next one and then, and then so it's loosened up and I can get in here up underneath with my hand actually and loosen it some more. But I'm going to back this up quite a ways, and the reason I'm going to do that, I'm going to make a mark on both this bottom one here. So this is the uh, loosener or tightener down here, this is the lock ring at the top. And I want to make a mark, if I can't make a mark on the threads, because I want to see how much I move it. Um, if I can't get a mark on the threads, I'll put one on one of the little notches here for the ring. So I know how many times I spin it around. So I need to adjust this probably about 10 mil. Well, yeah, about 10 millimeters. I'm gonna tighten it, so I'm gonna make this uh, stiffer, which means I'm gonna have to go clockwise on the bottom ring, and that's gonna compress the spring and make it a lot stiffer. So I'm gonna make a mark on that lower ring. Maybe I'll make two. And also on the threads, hopefully that will fit in there. Yeah, so I did manage to get a mark on the threads. And that will just help me know what kind of progress I'm making. Um, I'll try to show you with the camera. So, wow, this is really not gonna work I think it can kind of see what I did there top rings loosened off I have my markings and so now I'm just gonna take my modified screwdriver and I'm gonna start turning that bottom ring clockwise which is going to put pressure onto the spring so we're gonna have I guess the right term would be more preload. Okay, so on the lower ring, since we want to tighten it, tighten it up or increase the preload, I turned it around three times for my markings. So I did three revolutions and that got me uh, basically close to about 10 millimeters, which is what I was shooting for, something just a bit under a half an inch. And just for my measurements, I'll measure again. And I think I'm somewhere between the standard and hard setting. So I think that's where I want to be. So again, now I tighten down the locking ring, the top ring, just by hand. And now we're just going to tighten it down to lock it in place with the other ring. And this is not going to take a lot. Just a few, a few hits here. And I think we're pretty much done. I'll do some measuring because um, I, I had an idea of what it was before I started. Now I'm going to remeasure the shock. I'll show you that on paper again. You want to measure this from the very top of the spring. So the top sort of base of the spring to the very bottom and the base of the spring. If that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. But you want to measure that and what I found you know, give or take a few millimeters. 
So I ended up adjusting mine, give or take, maybe around 14 millimeters. Um, and I got it up to, to 190.5, which is slightly above, when they say minimum hard, is 187. So I'm within spec. You don't want to go any lower than 187. And I kind of came out around 190.5.